Bless the Lord. Good morning, family. Pastor Clint Ross here. What a joy it is to be with you this morning. It's Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Sunday is a church day. And I'm glad that we are together this morning. Um, I'm really praying and trusting God that we will get some good news from our president. Where we can at least gather as churches again, even if the numbers are not to the full amount that we would love it to be. Well, let me just greet some people as we coming online. Prophet Diavolt, my precious son, the Lord bless you. What a joy it is to see you here. Uh, Pastor Darwin Samuels, all the way from Kenard. God bless you. Thurlow Dean Johannes from East London. Praise God. Valencia, what a joy it is to see you this morning. I'm so blessed that the Lord has touched you and healed you. God is good. And it's Whitney Philander that's here. Whitney, we will wish you. I know it's your birthday today. Praise God. One of my favorite people in the world, Whitney Philander. Shop the toy pastor. God bless you all the way from Johannesburg. You are loved and honored. Thank you for what you are in my life. Pastor Chester, God bless you. I hope you're going to spoil your wife today, son. Angelique Rinquist, God bless you. Kim Lowe, Martin Jacobs, ah, I'm so blessed that you are here. And Angelina is also here. God bless you. Thank you. All the way from Johannesburg. Lauren Jafter, praise God. Praise God. Bonita uh, Solomons, Amorine Smith is here. God bless you, Amorine. So glad that you are here. Paul Nash, thank you, Paul. I received your seed this morning. God bless you. Thank you. I value that. Ah, praise God. My wife is joining us. Hallelujah. Is that Simone? N Natasha Prince, God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What a joy it is to have people here this morning. Ah, Raylene is here. God bless you, Raylene. Johanna Clausen, good morning, Johanna. Hallelujah. My brother, Pastor Chris Ross is here. One of my favorite people in the world. I love you, man of God. I love you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Alan Range is here. God bless you, Alan. Pastor Franklin Solomon, my associate pastor. I love you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you for joining this morning. And yes, Kim, thank you for that instruction. Let's share this broadcast this morning. I'm going to continue talking this morning. Liesl Kruger, God bless you, Liesl. I'm glad that you are here. I'm going to continue talking about pleasuring God. I love that title, pleasuring God. A lot of people are excited for God's power, which I am to the demonstration of His power. When God uses people prophetically, and you see how God works through flawed men, it's, it's an amazing thing. But what it brings me great, great pleasure is the thought of putting pleasure in the heart of God. He created all things for His pleasure, the Bible says. And so if I'm created in the image of God, and I want to bring Him pleasure, and so we're talking about that over the next few weeks. Hallelujah. And I'm excited about that. But first, let's pray and speak the blessing of the Lord over this morning. And uh, <clears throat> let God just touch you in your house there where you are. Father, I thank you for every individual that's under the sound of my voice. I bless you for their lives. I bless you that they are alive today. Thank you, God, in this time of turmoil, challenge where it is uncertain days we know for sure that our certainty is only resting in jesus christ and so father every one of us that's on this broadcast we thank you today for life for your blessing for your healing power that is over us those lord that need to touch from heaven today in their body i pray spirit of the living god that you would touch your people in the mighty name of jesus i consider Gideon and his family, Lord, that's in Johannesburg, that's in hospital, in ICU. 
I pray for him this morning. We bring him before your throne of grace as we've done this last few days. We pray that you would touch him, God, that you would heal him completely, that you would bring him out of his situation, that he will have a powerful testimony about the healing power of Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Bless our time together this morning and everyone that will listen. We thank you, Spirit of the living God, that you are here to minister through me and touch the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, glory to God. We have some birthdays. Let's start with the birthdays and celebrations today. On Wednesday was Kelsey's birthday. Woohoo! Kelsey was seven years old. That child is just too cute. My word, the words that come from her mouth. The kids today are just on another level, don't you think? <laughs> the ability to say certain things and use certain words at their age is astounding. But we honor God for that, for this, for their generation. Hallelujah. Yesterday was KJ's birthday. He's the son of JP. It was his first birthday. Happy birthday, KJ. And I know you don't understand yet what Pastor is saying, but congratulations to his parents on your son's first birthday. God bless you. And then today is Lady Pastor Whitney Philander's birthday. Pastor Whitney, we love you. We celebrate you. We are so glad that you are part of our lives. We're glad that God has brought you into the earth at a time such as this. I know that you have a great purpose and that many people's lives are already being touched through your ministry, who you are, and uh, there are bigger, bigger testimonies in you. And people in your future is going to need to hear that. And so we honor God for you and for your life. Um, celebrate that you are so close to me. I thank God for that. And so God bless you and everyone that has celebrated their birthday this week. Maybe we don't have your name on here, but we want to celebrate you and uh, rejoice with you that you've had another year that God has spared you and kept you. And so let's just pray for the birthdays. And with that, I'm also just going to my wife wrote here, there's a praise report, Valencia and Bonita and the family, that the Lord has touched you and healed you. They were all COVID positive, but God has come through. Sister Mary Jane and Janine and her family, uh, they were COVID positive, but God has come through and he has answered our prayers. We've been praying for you. And so we always want to thank God. You know, it's we don't just want to ask when he answers. We want to thank him for his goodness towards us. And so let's just pray for the birthdays and also the praise reports. Father, we thank you for everyone that has celebrated their birthday in the week. And today we're Whitney is celebrating her birthday. We pray the blessing of the Lord upon them that make it rich and add no sorrow. Father, the assignment they have been sent forth to do in the earth. I pray that the discovery of that will be speed and quick. Lord, that they may walk in the assignment that you have for them. Bless them, bless their lives in Jesus' name. Father, we also want to honor you today and we want to bring you thanks for healing families that has been touched by this demonic virus. I pray that in Jesus' name, Lord, that every other family that's still affected, that you would heal them. But thank you for those, Lord. Thank you for Valencia and her family. Thank you for Sister Mary Jane and her family that you have touched and healed. We honor you today and we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Taz Van Roy is here. Monique, praise God. I hope that you heard that we just prayed for your husband. Praise God. We believe God is going to come out of his situation. And then Lester Phillips, my precious friend, is here. Lester, I love you dearly. I honor you and I thank God that you are have been a friend of mine since my school days. What a privilege to have friends who stay with you through so, so many years. And so we honor God for that. Well, family, uh, let's get into the offering this morning and then we're going to get into the word of God. I would like to read to you from Job chapter 7 and Kim is not going to be happy with me because I should normally give the scriptures beforehand but I just felt just before I went on now that I want to read to you from Job 
chapter chapter sorry job chapter 36 and i'm going to read from verse 7. you will draw not his eye from the righteous but with kings are they on their throne yea he does establish them forever and they are exalted oh i love it in the bible talks like this and if they be bound in fetters and be holden in cords of affliction that could be a weakness um, that is holding you from from walking righteously before god but i also thought it could be even your debt holding you in cords um, we are on a wednesday night every wednesday i teach on coming out of debt how to come out of debt we have a millionaire's moment every wednesday where we talk for an hour and in this time i'm teaching about coming out of debt and so uh, i really believe that god wants us to live debt free um, so the bible says in verse 8 and if they be bound in fetters and holding in cords of affliction then he showed them their work and their transgressions that they have exceeded he opened also their ear to discipline and command that they return from iniquity verse 11 if they obey and serve him if you obey that what god has instructed you and commanded you in discipline and you start living righteously before god if they obey and serve him they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure god does not only want to live in pleasure god wants you also to live in pleasure and experience his pleasure and his prosperity but if they obey not they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge but i want to focus on verse 11 if they obey if they obey and serve him the word if is a powerful word if is a decision making word in other words you decide you decide if you want to obey god or if you don't want to obey god but if you obey him you shall spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure prosperity is having enough of god's provision to fulfill the assignment upon your life you are all born with an assignment you know the teachings that we do that god saw a problem and he created you to solve that problem in the earth and prosperity is when god brings that provision for you to be able to fulfill that assignment prosperity is the ability to solve problems for other people god wants us to prosper in every area of our lives uh, the Bible says, may you prosper even as your soul prospers. God wants you to prosper in every area of your life. And uh, financial prosperity is such a great blessing because through that we can build churches, we can, we can uh, build homes for the elderly, for, we can build orphanages, we can do so many things. I was just listening to the story yesterday about Dr. Mike Murdoch, where my daddy was sharing about here in Johannesburg, in South Africa, he was supporting an orphanage because he came to preach here and they took him to some children on the street and his heart really went out. And uh, he sent them 600,000 US dollars to build the orphanage. And one day he wanted to come visit and have a look at the orphanage and uh, they wouldn't let him see it isn't that amazing and uh, i'm so saddened by that that he would have had to experience that in our country um, where people would say we are doing this with the money and they're actually not doing with it integrity is a very important part of working with finances you have to be integrous that's why the bible says don't make a vow and you don't keep it um, because you have it's, it says it's better that you didn't vow um, because it affects your integrity you know when you said something and now you go back on your word um, and God is not like that you know God lifts his word above his name God is all about keeping his word but the Lord wants you to spend your days in prosperity God wants you to experience 
um, the ability to be able to help others, to be a blessing to others. It's one of the greatest joys of my life is being able to help other people, not just in my words, but also in being able to help them financially. Uh, when people are challenged and struggling, you come in and you are able to solve that problem. I have had many days in the past where I would come to people and my heart bleeds and I just think, if only I had a little bit extra, or if only I had some extra money, I'm sure some of you also feel that way, if only you had extra. But God wants us to be prosperous financially too, so that we can be a blessing in helping other people. Prosperity is not about a thicker stick. It's not about driving a flashier car. It's not about, it's about fulfilling the purpose that God has for your life. And so what is that purpose? Where, which countries do God want to send you to? Maybe you are not the one that should go. Maybe you should be supporting a missionary going into a country, but you have the ability financially that God gives you to be able to do that. And so consider the kingdom of God and in your, in your finances, consider the kingdom of God in your finances and supporting the work of the Lord. And so that's why even me, and as pastors, um, we take up offerings and God in his word, throughout the word speaks about bringing offerings to him. One of the greatest books about it is, uh, is in Malachi, where he actually says, if I am your father, Malachi 1, 6, where is my honor? And they are kind of confused about where in they have dishonored God. And he says, have you seen the kind of offerings you are bringing them? God is kind of big on an offering. When David sinned against the Lord um, with taking the census of the people, 1 Chronicles 21, and he offended God, and God said, make me an offering in this place, and I will forgive you. And remember when in that story where uh, David speaks to um, the owner of the land, and he says to him, um, I want to make an offering here to the Lord and I will buy everything that you have. And uh, he says to David, you are king, you can have everything. And David says, I will not give to God something that cost me nothing. Extremely powerful. And so family, I want to encourage you today that as you sow, sow with expectation. Your seed is what God multiplies. Your faith behind the seed is why he does it and so i want to encourage you as you sow into our ministry many of you have sown already and you still are i want to pray over your seed i want to pray over you today that god would bless you that god would uh, cause you to prosper hallelujah in every area of your life and my focus in this offering talk is on your finances i want you to prosper and do well so that you can be a blessing and fulfill the assignment that God has upon your life. Father, I thank you for your people. I pray to God that as they sow their seed, it is your heart's desire that they would prosper and they would spend their years in pleasure. Bless your people. Bless the work of their hands. Bless the season they are in. We are all in different seasons of our lives, Lord. Some are extremely challenged and they need a word and they need a way out. I pray, Father, that you would speak to them about what seed is important to sow in the season in the mighty name of jesus whether it's financial whether it's a word of kindness it's a seed whether it's going to someone to say i am sorry for what i've done teach them and show them what is the appropriate seed to sow in the season if they are challenged to get them into their next season to break them through and so wherever correction is needed we open ourselves to your correction. Teach us, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Keegan Williams, praise the Lord. I'm so glad that you are here, Keegan. And uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Hallelujah. I better watch my time. I want to teach this morning once again on pleasuring God. And last week, if you've missed it, you can go back. Um, we spoke from Revelation chapter 4 and verse 11. Revelation chapter 4. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Revelation chapter 4. And verse 11. It says, For thou, O Lord, sorry, for thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and they were created. God created all things for his pleasure. God is so serious about his world of pleasure. And um, <clears throat> as children of God, I think it's important that we want to bring pleasure to the heart of God and that we want to please him. There are men in the world, and I think at a later stage I'll teach about the men that brought God pleasure. And even the women that brought God pleasure and God favored them, God blessed them, and uh, they lived, they lived lives of blessing because of the favor of God. But God wants to be pleasured. So last week we dealt with Psalm 147. What brings pleasure to the heart of God? Verse 11: Those who fear Him bring Him pleasure. Philippians 2. We read from. Uh, verse 12 to 15, speaking about those who murmur and dispute always, um, they don't bring pleasure to the heart of God. God is not pleasured in that. Remember when the children of Israel murmured like that, um, God was not pleased. People who murmur are unthankful. They cannot see um, the goodness of God and where God has been good to them. They can only focus on the negative. And then Psalm 149, verse 4, um, God says, those who are meek, speaking about humility, honoring people, that, that's meek people. Um, God takes pleasure in meek people. God says, the meek shall inherit the earth. And then Psalm 35, verse 27, that speaks about the Lord takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Hallelujah. God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. So God is pleasured when his servants are prospering. And then Luke 12, verse 32, that it is his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And so, but today we're going to look at what does not pleasure God. I think it's important to look at the flip side of things and see what does not pleasure him. And so Psalm 5, verse 4. Let's go to Psalm Psalm 5, I'm sorry, Psalm 5 and verse 4. It says, For thou art not a God that has pleasure in wickedness, mm. neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. So God takes no pleasure in wickedness. God, uh, the foolish cannot stand in the sight of God. And then God hates all workers of iniquity. Let's look at the things that God hates. I thought when I read that, um, let's just look at what God hates. It will help us to understand what he's referring to, to wickedness and what he hates. And you find it in Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. And verse 16, I'm going to read verse 16 and 17, 18, 19. These six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. I often think when I think of that shedding innocent blood is where you speak against the innocent man and try to convince people that he's not innocent. God don't like that. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. A false witness that speak lies. God don't like that. And he that soweth discord amongst brethren. Wow. That is, we, we take these things for granted. We just like, don't care how we break up family members, how we speak in church, 
um, and bring accusations against this one. And we, we, we don't care how we break up things. Let me say that accusations are a terrible thing. They are of the devil. The Bible says that the devil is the accuser of the brethren. And so uh, accusational people speak lies all in the lying tongue, a proud look, hands that shed innocent blood, high, a heart that devise wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies. God don't like these things. Someone who break up uh, relationships amongst brethren and cause strife with people. God don't like that. And so God is not pleased um, with wickedness, with evil ways, because those are evil ways of people. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 4. We're talking about the things that don't bring pleasure to God. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 4. When thou vow a vow unto God, I just mentioned this now, defer, defer not to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou has vowed. God has no pleasure in someone who has made a vow and they don't stick to it. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay it. Wow. Verse 6, suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. So when your mouth says something and you go back on it, God is not pleased with that. Hallelujah. So God has no pleasure in fools. This verse is, for he has no pleasure in fools. Proverbs speaks a lot about fools. And uh, I thought today, um, let me let me read a little bit from my daddy's book because he has a whole chapter in the law of recognition about fools, where he speaks on recognition of a fool in this in this book, the law of recognition. Um, but let me just say one of the most powerful scriptures that I normally teach on is in Proverbs chapter twenty six and verse one that says. As rain in sorry, as snow in harvest and as rain in summer. Sorry, as as snow <laughs> as as snow in summer. Uh, forgive me. As snow in summer, as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemly for a fool. What does that mean? In my opinion, it means the day you see snow fall. In summer, that's the day that a fool will understand honor. For us living in South Africa, you never see snow fall in summer. Imagine snow falling in December on the in on, on Table Mountain in December. Well, when that happens, the Bible says that's the day a fool will understand honor. Isn't that strong? Foolish people are not honoring people. But let's look at what my daddy says about fools and what the word of God says about fools. A fool is anyone, Dr. Murdoch says, 43 important facts you should know about fools, that he says. A fool is anyone who despises wisdom, instruction, and correction from a proven mentor. The Bible says in Proverbs 1 verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And I, I, I like the fact that my daddy says a proven mentor because wisdom is seen in the fruits of her children. I was talking to someone yesterday and I said, uh, when you, whenever you look at someone, they can say many words, but what are the fruits of what is produced in what they believe? Look at their lives, look at their relationships, look at their relationships with their parents, with their, with, their, uh, with their pastor, with their wives, with their husband. Um, I often tell my children, my daughter and son is old enough to date, and I often tell them when you are dating someone and you're at their home, look at how they respond to their parents. Look at how they talk to their, even their siblings. If, if a guy would lift his hand to his sister, 
that is what you're going to get the day that you live with him. And so he can say all these nice words and he can quote a lot of things. He can even quote scripture. But wisdom is seen in the fruits of the children. What is it producing in his life? What is his belief system producing in his life? And so Dr. Murdoch says, a fool is anyone who despises wisdom and instruction and correction from a proven mentor. Someone who has proven and shown um, that the fruits they produce are godly ones. Number two, he says, a fool is anyone who attempts to destroy the reputation of a proven champion through lying and misrepresentation. A fool is anyone who attempts to destroy the reputation of a proven champion through lying and misrepresentation. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 18. He that utters a slander is a fool. Wow. I just looked at the word slander. I, have a, I know what it means and I thought, let me just look up what the word slander means. And this is what the uh, dictionary says about slandering and what someone does who slanders someone it is the action of making a false spoken statement trying to damage a person's reputation a false statement make that's made trying to damage a person's reputation he that utters a slander is a fool wow proverbs 10 verse 18 be careful that you don't uh, go around trying to slander someone's reputation that you know nothing about. Uh, one day I was sitting with a group of, of men and uh, they were talking about a man of God. And they wanted to know my opinion. And my first question was, do you know him? They said, well, we have heard him. We've known. I said, no, no, no. Have you shaken his hand? Have you ever drunk a cup of coffee with him? Have you ever met his family? Do you know him? And uh, they said, no, no, no. But you know what we, I said, that's a bit unfair. You know, to, to go ahead and slander someone that you don't really know. That's unfair. And so I really believe in that. I really believe that. Uh, be careful what you say about other people without even knowing facts hallelujah the bible says that he that utters a slander is a fool number three a fool is anyone who refuses to depart from evil even though they are corrected dr murdoch says proverbs 13 verse 19 but it is an abomination to fools to depart from evil huh. a fool is anyone who does not take the danger of sin seriously I was talking to one of my protégés the other day and I spoke about living your persuasions. You can say many things, uh, but your actions tell us what you really believe, what your persuasions really are. And so uh, you only live your persuasions. That's why many people don't believe there's a penalty uh, for their sin. They don't believe that uh, they'll end up in hell for their sin, even though they might say it with their words, but their actions and their persuasion show you they don't really believe it because they'll just continue with their arm. Ah. A fool is anyone who reveals confidence that should be kept private. How many things has been said to you that you should keep in private and people actually tell you don't say it? Um, I know you've heard this before, how people would say, um, I want to say this to you in confidence. Don't say this. And then that person goes to tell another friend in confidence about that thing. I want to say to you, whenever you have valuable information that you want to share with someone, remember whoever you are sharing it with is always trusting someone that you don't trust. You might trust that individual, but they are trusting someone that you won't trust. And so be careful who you share information with. But when you do receive information um, and someone has asked you to please 
not speak about it. I hope you have enough integrity to do that. And not go and tell somebody else in confidence and then that person plus somebody else and they tell that person in confidence and that person. Afterwards, everybody knows in confidence what's been happening through this, through whatever is happening in this individual's life. So, uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 14, 33, Wisdom resteth in the heart of him that has understanding, but that which is in the midst of fools is made known. Fools will easily just speak out. Okay. A fool is any son that disregard the wisdom of his father. Proverbs 15 verse 5, a fool despises his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. Number seven, a fool is any son that shows disrespect towards the mother that brought him into the world. A wise son maketh a glad father, but the foolish man despises his mother. Not too long ago, my, date, my, my daughter was dating a guy and she was telling me how he speaks to his mother. And I was extremely concerned. Um, you know, when you're talking to your children and when someone loves somebody, it's very hard for them to see beyond the flaws of that person. Uh, or sorry, be, beyond the love they have for the person. Let me put it that way. So they don't see the flaws. And, uh, but she mentioned a few things to me and how he responds and how hurt his mother is through his responses. And I just thought to myself, this boy is a fool. And uh, I spoke to her a little bit about it, but most of the time I can only pray about it. And, uh, thank God that she is no longer with him because I'm always concerned about what will happen to them when they end up with the wrong partner in life. I'm telling you, uh, your life can be a very, very challenging one if you have chosen wrong. And there are always signs that will help you. I always look for signs. Uh, when you go to a doctor and you tell him you're not well, you have a pain in your side or something, they take out uh, a stethoscope and they start to listen to your heart. They listen to things and they are looking for signs to tell them where the problem possibly could be. They look into your eyes and see um, if your eyes are diluted and they try to find signs that will tell them. That's why before you pass out with your license, they first teach you all the signs of the road because signs warn you of danger. Imagine getting to a hairpin bend at the speed of 120 kilometers an hour, but you don't know the sign is warning you there's a hairpin bend. Your life is in danger. And so signs warn you. And I, I'm, I'm always about looking for signs that can warn you. All right, so anyone who speaks bad to his mother and you're dating him, it's a sign. Mm. A fool is, is someone whose conduct does not change even after experiencing painful consequences from it. Proverbs 17 verse 10, a reproof enters more into a wise man than a hundred stripes into a fool. So even if he sees in his decision making and in his folly that he was wrong, he would still just continue in his wrong. That is a fool. A fool is anyone who considers any pursuit of wisdom to be a waste of effort. <laughs> Ever find people telling you, why do you want to go to church? Just, you know, it's cold today. Just stay at home. Any pursuit of wisdom. Because this is God's wisdom to us. His word is his wisdom. And so when it is preached in the house of God, when it is preached anywhere, God's wisdom is being shared with people. And so there are people who will keep you away from the house of God. I often speak to our church people. And I, I said, encourage the people you know, encourage your family members that, Sunday is a church day, you know, um, birthday parties and all those things, uh, they are important and we celebrate that, but don't have it 10 o'clock in the morning when it's a church hour, have it the afternoon at three and uh, try to find or have it on a Saturday or 
a time. There are other times when you are free, when you can have those things. But don't move away or look at people who want to keep you out of the house of God. They're trying to keep you away from the wisdom of God. Number 10, a fool is anyone who continually expresses discontent with God. Proverbs 19 verse 3, the foolish, the foolishness of man's, of a man perverse his ways, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. A fool is anyone who refuses to embrace peace. Oh, I am, I'm big on fighting for my peace. When people come into our home, they often tell me it's so peaceful. And that peace is not just because it's quiet or that peace is something I fight for. I, I, I work hard to get any strife out of my environment. And so even amongst my family and my children and uh, us in my home, we strive for peace. But fools don't care if they destroy the peace of an environment. Um, Proverbs chapter 20 verse 3 says, it is an honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be meddling. <laughs> I, have, I have, did you know, I have people who tell my children, why do you honor your father so much? Isn't that, it astounds me. Why do you honor your father? When I, I have rules with my children that when they go out, if they get to their destination, just send me a message to tell me that you are safe so that I know that you have arrived. If you, if the message don't come, I worry if you are okay. And when you leave from wherever you are, just message me and say, Daddy, I'm on my way home now so that I know and I'm, I'm conscious of the time it will take you to get home. If you should get home in 20 minutes and it's more than an hour later, I should become concerned. Where are you? But there are people who tell my kids, why do you want to do that? Why do you want to message your father and tell him where you are? And, and my kids are shocked because they want to do it. They say, well, that's what my father expects of us. So that's what we do. But other people will actually speak against that honor that is required. Amazing, isn't it? So the Bible says in Proverbs 20 verse 3, it is an honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be meddling. Wherever there's peace, a fool wants to disrupt it. You'll be meddling into an environment of peace. You would want to go against rules and things that is not even his environment or her environment. Be careful. Number 12, a fool is any man who spends more money than he is willing to earn for his family. And uh, we deal with this on a Wednesday night about spending more than you are earning. Uh, it's foolishness and it will get you into debt. Proverbs 21 verse 20, there is a treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spend it up. He will spend up everything. Number 13, a fool is anyone who creates his own belief system contrary to the word of God. Proverbs 28 verse 26, he that trusts in his own heart is a fool, but whosoever walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. The wisdom of God is the word of God. If you live and walk according to the word of God, you will be blessed. Don't walk contrary to the word of God. A fool is anyone who refused to pay his debt. Wednesday nights. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 4 and 5 was the scripture we read. If you make a vow unto God, you must keep it. Number 15. A fool is anyone who makes financial increase his life focus rather than God. Luke 12 verse 20 and 21. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who, then who shall those things be? Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? 
I'm sorry, Jalene. I should be wearing my specs. Please forgive me. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Seek first the kingdom of God and the other things will be added unto you. God has no problem with you having riches. God has no problem with your prosperity. But God wants to be first in everything that we do. So anyone who seeks riches before he seeks God is a fool. A fool is a fool is someone who wants something he has not earned yet. Whether that is um, credibility from a father or a mentor, you've not earned it, but you want him to recommend you somewhere. That comes with uh, it comes with time. Taking something that is what debt is. Debt is the proof of impatience. Debt is the proof that you weren't willing to wait for God to bring it to you. And so you went into debt. Uh, I hope this is helping you. Number 17. A fool that keeps silent often remains undetected. <laughs> if you just kept quiet, nobody would have known that you are a fool. What's our time? We still have some time, family. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 28. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. When he just keeps quiet, nobody would know you a fool. Uh, he is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. I often say, you must always know who you are and know you are not. There are environments that you talk and there are environments when you have to sit still and listen. And why you must know who you are and who you are not. There are environments that you come into. You don't know everything. The other day I had a meeting with a, a politician. And um, as I sat with him, I realized this is his world. He knows more about this world than what I do. And I need to sit and listen. And the only part of the conversation I had was asking questions um, to extract his knowledge. But for me to go talk about politics and what's happening in the political, I don't know enough. Especially when I'm speaking to someone who is in that world. And so often when I do speak to people who don't know enough about it anyway, and we have our little talks about it, um, I would say something, but not in a world of someone who knows about uh, his industry or his world. I often think of uh, people, I make this example, who want to argue with a pilot, but they've only read the manual about how to fly, or they have played these games on the simulators on how to fly, but they want to argue with a pilot <laughs> who was a true pilot on how to fly. It's foolish. It is foolish to argue about the man, to uh, to argue with a man about a world that he understands. Uh, but if you just keep quiet and in environments where people know um, what they're talking about, you could learn. You could learn. Where are we? Number eighteen. A fool is always at the center of strife and contention. Wow. Does this remind you of some even family members and friends that you know? There's never a day that you can sit with them where there's a peaceful talk. It's always an argument, strife, contention, always disagreements. Proverbs 18 verse 6 and 7. A fool's lips enter into contention. And his mouth calleth for strokes. A fool's mouth is his destruction. And his lips are the snares of his soul. Wow. Always striving, always arguing, always bickering and fighting. Remember, God takes no pleasure in fools. That's why we are reading this. Very powerful book. I would encourage you 
to get the book of Dr. Murdoch, the law of recognition. And he's talking about recognition of a fool. Number 19, a companion to fools will ultimately be destroyed. Proverbs 13 verse 20. He that walketh with the wise shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Be careful who you walk with. Be careful about contentious people who's always arguing and bickering and fighting. Um, all those things that I've mentioned before this, uh, they won't listen to their parents. Um, uh, they bring strife in their home towards their mother. They won't listen to their father. Fools. If you walk with them, you will also be destroyed. Number 20, the wise always leave the presence of fools when they perceive a lack of desire for knowledge. Proverbs 14 verse 7, go from the, presen from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceive not in him the lips of knowledge. When there is no understanding and knowledge on the lips of a man, the Bible says, move away from such a person. Liars are fools. Proverbs 10 verse 18. He that hideth, he that hideth hatred with lying lips is a fool. A liar destroys his trustworthiness with a single sentence. He will trade a lifetime relationship for a single falsehood. Without a doubt, he is a fool. Wow. Praise God. I want you to get this book. 26. Let me jump here. A fool who is trusted ultimately destroys those who trust him. Proverbs 26 verse 6. He that sendeth a message by the hand of a fool cutteth off the feet and drinketh damage. A fool who is trusted ultimately destroys those who trust him. Be careful that you don't put your trust in foolish people. Uh, wow. Number 25, let me read this. The continuous threat of pain is the only influence that keeps a fool in his place. Proverbs 26 verse 3. A whip, for the, a whip for the horse, a bride for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. Wow. So Dr. Murdoch says, a continuous threat of pain is the only influence that keeps a fool in place. Very, very powerful. Number 36, a fool never believes that he is wrong. Keep thy foot when thou go in the house of God and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. That is so powerful. For they consider not that they do evil. Let me read that scripture again. It's Ecclesiastes 5 verse 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. And be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they do evil. Go to the house of God to learn. Don't go there to disrupt it. Don't go there to bring strife amongst brethren. Don't go there to um, create strife. Like we read earlier, the things that God hates. Uh, breaking up. <coughs> Brotherly love and sisterly love. God takes no pleasure in those things. Mm. Family, we want to pleasure the heart of God. These are all things that foolish people does. Number 40, a conversation with fools should be avoided. Proverbs 26 verse 4. Answer not a fool according to his folly, 
lest thou also be like unto him. But the Murdoch often tells us, never argue with a fool. Because in your argument, eventually, people won't know who the true fool is. Because foolish people can get the wrong side of you out. And they just, they, they enjoy arguments. They enjoy strife. They enjoy fighting and slandering. And fools enjoy it. And wise people don't. So don't get into arguments with a fool. Later on, people won't know who the true fool is because you now also start, they accuse and then you start accusing. And that's the purpose of accusation. Um, the devil uses accusers to accuse you <clears throat> so that you eventually can also be so angered and bittered by what they say that you also become an accuser yourself. If you're an accuser, you are doing the work of the devil. Because he is the accuser of the brethren. God is not pleased with that. Not pleased at all with it. Hallelujah. Next week I'm going to deal with how God keeps pleasure in this world. How God eradicates things um, that does not bring him pleasure. Because God is big on pleasure in his world. He strives for peace and pleasure. Uh, Praise God. <laughs> I love that, Kim. men so break Don't argue with a fool. Yes, hallelujah. Brandon, bless you. Philip Roman, God bless you. Angelique, thank you for these comments. Uh, Pastor Darwin says, Dad, you are such a skilled warrior in the kingdom of God. You rescue us from the lap of knowledge. Thank you for never ceasing from waging war against the kingdom of darkness by teaching us. I value that. Praise God. Powerful word, Pastor Clint. Thank you, Chantal. God bless you. Craig Van Roy is here. Bless you, Craig. So blessed that you are joining us today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Carlos Stoffer. This is pure word-based teaching today. Not sure. <laughs> bless you, Carlo. God bless you. Prophet X is here, my precious son. I'm so blessed that you are here. I love you dearly. It is foolish to argue with a man who is a genius in an environment. He is trained. Wow. Your words are helping me, Dan. Yes. Praise God. Family, thank you all for joining. Thank you for being here this morning. Praise God. We will continue next week on pleasure in God. And so last week we spoke about the things that bring him pleasure. And this week the things uh, that God is not pleasured in. I know we spent a lot of time on fools. I just thought it is so uh, rich, the knowledge that... The Bible shares and that my daddy shares in his book. So I pray that God would help you this week to recognize fools and where you have acted foolishly that you would repent from your ways and say God help me that I would not be so argumentative and fight and argue with people um, all the time and bring strife into environments. Uh, help me to be a peacemaker. Blessed are the peacemakers. And so uh, may God help us that we would bring pleasure to the heart of God. And when we bring pleasure to the heart of God, we also bring pleasure. We have a desire to bring pleasure into people's world because we are problem solvers. We don't create problems. We solve problems for people. And so let me just pray with you. Father, thank you for this teaching today. Thank you for everyone that was under the sound of my voice. I pray that you would... Lord, bless your people. Let your hand go before them. Give them wisdom in their decision making. Father, where we have been wrong and foolish in the way we have been doing things and maybe just argumentative about stuff and help us, Lord, in our thought patterns, in our ways. May your word correct us because your word does correct us. Your word heals us if we were able and willing to receive it. And so we receive your word today. 
I pray that every household listening to me today, that peace would come into their house. I pray that strife would be removed from their homes, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. May we fight to pleasure you and to pleasure your heart and in that way bring pleasure into our own environments in the mighty name of Jesus. Family, have a blessed day today. Thank you for joining me and may God bless the Sunday and the week ahead for you. Bye-bye.